say it's good to see you. If you are online, we want to say welcome. We are so excited that you have chosen to spend some of your Wednesday night with us. We're going to worship the Lord together.
pulled you out in the darkest of nights, where would you be tonight? I want every hand in this building raised. You know, praise begins with a mindset that is put on God. So I want us to think back to some pits that you've been in in your life. And then look at where you're standing today. And say, who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but who rescued me, who rescued me from that grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gave me glory and praise. Nobody but Jesus, who rescued me, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise. Say, nobody. Yeah. 
voice and declare it your name Worshiping people of God, throw your hands up and in your own words. I want you to give that name. No! I want you to give that name your glory, your honor, your praise. Father, we worship you tonight. Declaring your name. Every voice, we praise the name. Your name is the highest. Your name, Lord, your name stands above all thrones and dominions. the people of God to give that name that name whereby you were saved and redeemed and transformed and healed and liberated somebody lift up the great we all bow before your name Jesus I pray tonight for Bishop Rick, Rick Hawkins. I call your name. I declare healing over your body. Leukemia is a name that must bow to the name of Jesus. I speak healing to every cell, every fiber, every bone, every vessel in your body. I speak healing to you now by that great name. Blessed Lamb of God, we worship you. Can you just lift up your hands and worship Him? We worship you. We bow before you. We lay our crowns at your feet. You alone are worthy. And you are worthy of it all. All our praise, all our adoration. You are worthy of it all. And we worship you tonight. Are you thankful for the power of that great name tonight? Come on, throw your hands up and tell him in your own words. Yes, Lord. For from you all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. 
one more time. Come on, every voice lifted, tell him. You're worthy of it all. You and you alone, God. You're worthy of it all. For from me, for from me. song Lisa we used to sing this is be be glorified it's just that's what I feel in my heart you ever come to that place where you just want him to be glorified in your worship oh y'all wanting to sing tonight huh come on say it Where, where's Ron Canole when you need him? Come on, lift up your voice, every voice. Say. Hey, every voice lifted. Say. Well, why don't you take a minute and give him a little glory tonight. He's worthy of it. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, if that name ever reached way down and picked you up out of the miry clay, if that name ever spoke peace to you in the midnight moment, if that name ever brought joy, I want you to lift up the great name of Jesus. Slap your neighbor a high five and tell him he's worthy. Come on, shout it, he's worthy. In the midnight hour, he's worthy. In the middle of trouble, he's worthy. Ah, you serve a worthy God tonight. Yes, Lord. So good to see you. So good to feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Tell your neighbor, say, thanks for bringing him with you. Because I feel him in the room tonight. Come on, turn around, tell somebody behind you, thanks for bringing him with you. Amen. Young people, you may be dismissed right down this aisle. There'll be folks back there if this is your first time to tell you where to go. Before you're seated, why don't you greet four or five people and tell them you love them. Tell them it's good to see them in God's house. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything I love you Jesus I worship and adore you just want to tell that I love more than he do you love him tonight come on let's sing it together say i love you i love you jesus come on choir come on tell him i worship and i just want to tell that more than he Tell him with all your heart, you worship, worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Man. just want to tell you I love you 
Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Play, Shamar. Play, Shamar. Well, that just says it, don't it? I love you, Jesus. I worship there. Just one. give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm away have your way in Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. your heart tonight I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me sing it church time tell him I give myself can you give the Lord a great praise tonight for his goodness <laughs> sing son My life is not my own. To you, tell it. I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself for you. How many of you been wanting to give more of you to Him? Now's a good time to do it. I give my. So you, Father, I've come to give myself away. I give myself away. Oh, I think that's a good place to just give him praise. Hallelujah. He gave it all. He gave it all. Amen. My, I just tell you, I'm, I don't know how much good I'll be tonight. I'm still sort of basking in the afterglow of Sunday morning. And uh, we ended up baptizing 52 people during the 1 o'clock service. has been on overflow ever since. I kind of reminded 
during that Shamar play, that bridge from generation to generation, there's no... I know 35 plus of the people that were baptized on Sunday were under the age of 25. And this song played on repeat while I was baptizing. From generation to generation, there's no boundary to your greatness. The why has seen, ear has here it is. You're not done. From generation to generation, there's no boundary to your I has seen. You has heard, you're not done yet. One more time, we declare it. From generation to generation, there's no boundary to your greatness. No eye has seen, you're not done. Say, you're not done yet. Come on, tell him. You're not done yet. You believe that in your family? You're not done. Come on, declare it over your life. You're not done yet. Hey, you're not done. No, you're not done yet. I know you're not done yet. You're not done yet. Mm. Ushers, join me. I, I might sing a while. I would just declare that over you in your life today. Over the unfinished business in your family. Can I just encourage you? It's a just unfinished. It's not over. He's not done yet. I need you to encourage three or four people sitting around you that may need it. You don't know what they're walking through, but I want them to know tonight. God's got unfinished business. He's not done yet. I know he's not done. That's good right there. That right there was enough to come to church for right there. Tell your neighbor, he ain't finished with you. Do not lose your hold on faith. He's not finished yet. I want to I want to tell somebody. Come on. Get your joy up. It's coming. Get your joy up. He's working. If you can't see it, just know he's not done in your life yet. He's not finished. He's not finished with you. Say, he's not done yet. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody's getting that right there. Come on, don't lay down your arms yet. Don't lay down your weaponry yet. Don't don't take off your armor yet. He's not finished. He's not done yet. If it's not good, it just means he's not done. Because when he's done, it will be good. He never finishes before. He can say it's good. 
He's working in that marriage. Keep worshiping him. Keep worshiping. He's not finished in your finances. He's not finished in your family, in your physical body. He's just not done. Father, we thank you for it. You finished it. But you're not done yet. How many of you feel him working in your life? How many of you feel him probing for more than you've ever given him before? Steph reminded me of this uh, before service. Her and I had a, a meaningful conversation a couple weeks ago. It's probably been longer than that now, maybe a month, month and a half ago. And uh, I was trying to minister to her. And, uh, you know, with what she's walking through, there's good days and bad days. That's just the reality. But it's all that she's missing that has been sort of the biggest source of contention so I was just giving her some advice and loving her and she looked at me and she said you know your quest to make me great is exhausting <laughs> how many of you ever feel like God's quest to make you great can get exhausting but how many of you know it's worth it when you give it all yeah it's worth it when you give it all worth it when you give it all I want to teach a while tonight but I want to receive the tithe and offering before I feel like I've got some things that are going to resonate in the room as we're talking about healing I, I just have never been in a season where God's put more on the table than he has put on the table right now it's all available he is hiding nothing he is keeping nothing he is offering everything. And in this season where he has set the table, so important for us to come as sons and daughters and to take our seat. So often we live like Mephibosheth without the knowledge that we have a seat at the table. And when you don't know you have a seat, you always settle for something less than your birthright. Tell your neighbor, say, you're in covenant for more than that. It's all on the table. And tonight, I want us to prepare a tithe and an offering, just a worship. I, I don't want to encourage you to give. If you feel like giving, if this is your night for tithe and offering, get it ready. But I want it to be a worship. Sometimes we need to sow not for anything just because he's been good. May not be perfect, but he's been good. I've been saying that a lot lately, and it encourages my faith. It may not be perfect, but he's been good. Oh, could it be worse? You bet you it could be. I'm going to thank him for the good stuff. How many of you got some good stuff you'd like to thank him for? Come on, it ain't all together yet, but it's on its way. How many of you feel like this? The devil's mad because he sees it. It's on its way. He's fighting because he knows. Progress has been made. Amen. And let's, let's prepare a tithe and an offering tonight. The seat back in front of you is an offering envelope for your cash giving. If you're making out a check, make it payable to the Kingdom Center. Put a TKC on. The other giving information is on the screen behind us. I just want to worship this away. Can we do that? Can you, do you know, here I am to worship? I just, I just like to fool with him to see, you know. Every once in a while, I catch him. Father, we thank you. What a gift you are to our life and what a gift you are to this house. And we thank you today. We rest just in this moment in your presence. You are refreshing right now. I feel the joy of the Lord being released throughout this place. And we rest in it. We sit down in this cloud of your presence to receive, but also to worship you, for you've been good. 
And tonight we sow, believing, Father, that you'll receive it from our hearts as a worship gift for how good you've been. Are you ready to give? Let's worship a while, just while you're sowing. We'll sing it together. Let's just wait on the people. Here we go. Worship. You're my God. You're all together lovely. All together lovely. All together wonderful to Come on, tell him. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Every voice, come on, tell it with all your heart. Say, Here I am, work, here I am to bow down. You're my God, you're all together, love me, all If he's been wonderful to you, can you give him a great praise tonight? Come on, tell him he's been wonderful, wonderful. Okay, a couple of things. While you're turning in your Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 30, all over the room, 1 Samuel 30. A couple of things. Is there anybody here tonight, you're here worshiping with us? for the very first time. Will you just wave at me so I can say hello? Wonderful. Good to see you. Any others? Wonderful. Come on, let's tell each of our guests we're thankful they're here tonight. This coming Sunday, we're going to host a meet and greet after every service. If you are new or newer to the ministry and would just like uh, maybe to hear a little more or to interact with the leadership here Sunday following each service meet and greet it's just all the way down to the end of the hall last door on the right and then fresh start listen if you are new to Christ or maybe you just feel like you could lay a better foundation for your spiritual life this fresh start class is for you session two is this Sunday following or during the one o'clock service and you can register for that at events.thekingdom.center. And because it's a class that runs, um, does it matter what week they get in on, Joel? So it's okay if they start this week, then they can end on week one. I like that. Good, good idea. It's very good. And then let me tell you something I'm believing for. And I told you I wasn't going to be much good tonight. So I'm just... I could just lay at his feet right now. He's been good to me. Um, but I'm believing for miracles to come out of the soil in response to your faith expressed in the sowing of a resurrection seed. I am praying, Steph and I, joining together every day covering your seed. And what I'm expecting is testimonies to come forth. And I want to encourage you, don't leave that seed in the ground and not tend to it. You got to weed it. You got to water it. You got to speak the word over that thing and understand that your sickle is in your mouth. Ooh, I don't have time to teach that, but I want to tell you how you reap is with your mouth. You got to open up your mouth and reap your harvest. You got to declare the harvest on that seed each and every day. And when it happens, I want you to testify. Testify.thekingdom.center. Leave those testimonies so that we can rejoice because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. 
Hallelujah. All right. First Samuel chapter 30. Father, I ask you for a few moments to expose your heart in your word by way of revelation. Speak to us tonight. Because each of us in our own way need healing. Each of us in our own way need the stripes of Calvary to intervene in our lives. We ask you, speak to us tonight. Help us to find ourselves in the text, to hear the words we need to hear for the pain that we've been exposed to, that we may be free to chase you in a new, in a new way. For it, we give you praise. Everybody says amen. Okay, I'm going to read out of 1 Samuel 30. And I'd really like to... Man, that's too many verses. Um, well, let me start into it and see how we feel. You got your Bible? This is a familiar story. And from history, we want to extract prophecy. If you want to know what God is doing, you have to look at what he did. Because in what he did, we can find what he is doing. Because everything he ever did, he is still doing today. And it came to pass, verse 1, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and spit, smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And taking the women captive, captive that were therein, they slew not any, neither, either great or small. That's a, that's a key phrase in this story, and I'm probably not going to get to teach it, but you need to, you need to highlight. And they slew not any. Know this, the enemy only has access to what God gives him access to. And if you just read this story because you've heard it so many times, you're going to miss one of the most important phrases in the entire chapter. And they did not, they didn't kill any of them. Because the adversary did not have access to that dimension of destruction. The enemy cannot destroy you. He can only distract you. We are about to hear about a situation that caused intense pain, intense distress, intense emotions. And at the time that David is having these very intense emotions, he doesn't know that this one phrase is still alive in the context of the story. They burned his house. They took his family. But they didn't kill any of them. Maybe I'll get back to that, but maybe not. I wanted to point it out. See, some of you feel like, oh, this is the worst. No. Because the enemy doesn't have access to that dimension. All right. Carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned, and their wives and sons and daughters were captive. David and the people that were with him, watch this, verse 4, very, very important verse in the context of the story. They that were with him lifted their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Just want you to understand the, the depths of this pain and this emotion. And David's two wives were taken captive David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. Oh, how quickly the tables can turn. You know what I found out about leadership is if you don't get too puffed up with the praise, you won't get too beat up with the criticism. For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people were, was grieved. Important. Soul was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David encouraged himself. 
in the Lord. And David said to the priest, bring me the ephod. And they brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? And God answered two questions with three answers. Pursue, for you will overtake and without fail recover all. Just tell your neighbor you will recover. Oh, that's what I'd like to talk to somebody tonight. I want to tell you, I don't know your situation, but I do know this. You will recover. Verse 18 and 19, David recovered all that had been carried away. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small or great, neither sons or daughters, neither spoil or anything they had taken to them. David recovered We've been teaching on the subject of healing, and I want to say that there are, many, there are many aspects of sickness and pain, so there are also many dimensions to the healing grace that God paid for through the broken body of his son on Calvary. I know that all pain is not equal. All pain is not the same. And yet, no matter how different your pain is from mine, the recovery process is the same. There are many types of pain you and I are going to have to navigate in this walk of life. And though not all pain is the same, their impact can be so profound that it shifts our personalities it shifts our emotions, and because it is so powerful in our life, it can shift and change the future that God is trying to bring us into. So whether that pain is physical or relational or emotional or spiritual or mental, just know that the recovery process in Christ is all the same. I want you to write this down. Pain is an incredible teacher to those who are paying attention. If you are in pain but you haven't learned, that may be the reason you're still in pain. But pain is an incredible teacher. It will teach you how to trust, how to lean, how to persevere. It'll teach you how to receive the promise of God. But far too often in my experience in leading people is that we allow pain to teach us the wrong lessons. Come on, help me somebody. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to where somebody's at tonight because we allow pain to teach us the wrong lessons, like how to run to the wrong things. Like how to get bitter and how to give up. And like how to quit. And unfortunately, our tendency is to quit the moment that pain shows up to give us a much needed lesson. And rather than learn the appropriate lesson, we just quit the game. I have been friends for a number of years with a giant of a man who played left tackle, who actually played left tackle for Brett Favre when they won the Super Bowl, but then he moved to Ohio and played left tackle for the Cleveland Browns. And he told me, he said, by midseason, everybody's playing hurt. He said, but there is a difference between being hurt and being injured. I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but you need to diagnose because there's sometimes you just got to keep playing when you're hurt. Now, how we persevere through our moments of hurt and pain and disappointment will determine the level of our victory in certain seasons of our life. Your response to pain is important. 
David was a man who was accustomed in his life to playing wounded. And you're going to have to play wounded sometimes. But please understand, staying wounded is a choice. You'll have to play hurt sometimes. But staying hurt is a choice. And some of you in this room have held on to hurt until it has festered and impacted every area of your life because you made a choice to stay hurt and to stay wounded. But throughout David's life, he encountered seasons of pain that required mental, physical, and spiritual toughness to continue until the victory came. He had allowed pain and or had he allowed pain and disappointment to sideline him, he would have never walked into the fullness of his destiny. See, pain's not the end, 